Radio, it is time to head into the chat room with broadcaster Katie Wolfe in Darwin and Shelley Horton from Nine Honey in Sydney. Good afternoon, ladies. Hello there. Hello. Okay, first to a story that has sparked a furious debate over gender equality. It all started with this photo. A seemingly innocent picture of two surfers, both of them junior champions. But apart from their gender, there's one big difference. The size of their paycheck. The male winner taking home double what the female competitor earned. The controversial image causing outrage with thousands of angry comments about their gender pay gap. Katie, what was your reaction when you saw this? Oh, I was surprised and disappointed, as I think you'd find most people around the country were, especially women. Um, you know, we talk so much about that gender pay gap and there's really nowhere more obvious uh, than the sporting arena, whether it's surfing or whether it's football. It doesn't really matter what sport you look at. In fact, I think if you took a look probably at our top Australian netballers in comparison mm -hmm. to the likes of cricketers. our top NRL players or our <laughs> cricketers, you'd see a massive gap. But I think we've got to ask ourselves as well why this is happening because I think it's happened for such a long period of time not because anybody maybe I'm naive but I think it comes down to more the fact that if you're looking at sponsorship and you're looking at the administration side of things are we fighting hard enough to make mm. sure that our women get their fair share when it comes to the sporting field I feel really passionate about this I played a lot of sport as a young person and I know that they tried all sorts of things to try to get people to come and watch just play touch football. Mm. At one stage I was playing in essentially a leotard so people would come and watch. What? You know, that's um, it's, all kinds yeah, of and wrong a lot there. of the time, well, but that's sort of the way that it's, you know, the way that we've seen sport evolve over the years and I think that we've gotten to the point now where it needs to evolve, where our women are getting paid mm -hmm. more, our administrators, our managers, everybody needs to step up and go, well, let's get better sponsorship for our women and let's get some more money for our women. Yeah, well, it's not like she was surfing at the same beach with the same oh, waves. Same it's waves. not like she was surfing half as good as her male competitor. But, Shelley, the competition manager said males generally get paid more in surfing comps because they, there are more of them in their field. Do you think that's a good enough excuse? Absolutely not. I mean, this is a huge PR fail on his behalf to actually come out and even say that. I think this is a time for us to actually talk about equality and make some differences, you know. Put that money together and split it in half. That's the way it should be. Mm -hmm. I mean, we recently had our um, State of Origin Rugby League female player had to quit her job to play. Yeah. So that's mm. the kind of differences we're talking about. So we can't have equality. And as you said, it's not like the waves were half the height. It's not like they had to travel half the distance. Mm. I think that this is something that we really need to make a bit of a fuss about. Yeah, and it's good that people are making a fuss because, you yeah, know, I love first Katie of all, you... I'm like, yay, Katie. Yeah, when well, <laughs> yeah. you first look at it's that true. photo, it's kind of like, oh, yeah, and then you're like, okay, but hang on a minute. So people yeah. are actually thinking about it now, which is great. And it's it great true. to see how the world is changing slowly, perhaps, but people are speaking up about it. And so I think it's a good opportunity for them to turn this around. And if mm. they do make it uh, more equal pay, then they will be seen as heroes. Yeah. So remember that as well. Yeah. Okay, here's another example. Peter Alexander, for forced to remove this jumper emblazoned with the slogan boys will be boys from their stores after concerned parents complained about the use of the phrase. Shelley, when I first looked at it, I thought, oh, I don't know. I mean, is this just an overreaction? Would I be offended if I saw a boy in the street wearing this jumper? But then I thought, hang on, as a mother of three girls, maybe I should. I what don't was think your, it's about, yeah, was think your it's about being offended. I think it's about changing our language. Because yeah. you know what? Boys will be boys means boys getting away with poor behaviour. It means fighting with each other. It means, you know, hitting someone with a truck. It means pulling hair. And that people go, oh, boys will be boys. They're always mm. rough. It's actually not OK anymore. And we just like I don't like girls being called bossy, that's mm. not OK anymore. We actually need to start changing the language. And as far as people saying, I'm not offended by that, I'm just like, yeah, but... Does it make any difference to your day if that jumper is not there? So mm. it's not a yeah, PC exactly. thing, it's actually just being emotionally correct. We are at a huge point of change when it comes to women and men in society mm. with Me Too and Time's Up and we've got to make that change from birth. So little toddlers wearing this is not okay by me. Yeah, and as you say, what, what does it matter if it's not there? Yeah. Katie, would you buy this shirt for your son? Do you think Peter Alexander should have taken it off the market or, or do you think that it is just another case of political correctness gone mad? 
Look, I wouldn't buy the shirt for my son and I don't see a big issue with it no longer being on the shelf, but I see it very much as a symbolic gesture. Mm -hmm. I think if we really want to make some change with the way that our boys behave, it comes down to educating them and it comes down to parents, our leaders, educating our boys in a certain way. Now, I, you know, I don't expect my son to behave any differently to how I expect my daughter to behave. Mm -hmm. I expect very good behaviour from both of them. My little boy does does tend to play out outside and certainly get into dirt and trucks and mm. kick a footy a lot more than my daughter does. But I actually think if we want to make real inroads here, it comes down to education rather than symbolic gestures. Yeah, and down to I the think symbolic adds to the education. Mm. So you know what, it if we just remove does. these signs, then it's just going to help the cause. Yeah. Good points, ladies. We do have to leave it there. We're going to take a quick break and come back to you in just a moment. But first, it's time to say goodbye to Western Australia viewers. For everyone else, still ahead in the chat room, should we push our kids to take more risks? We'll be talking about the study that's found it could reduce childhood anxiety. And forget hospital food, why more and more patients are opting to order in. Let's head straight back into the chat room with Katie Wolfe and Shelley Horton. We've heard of helicopter parenting, but what about CPB? Challenging parenting behaviour is the opposite of being over-controlling and over-protective, encouraging our children to take risks and push their limits. And a new study shows this way of parenting could reduce the risk of childhood anxiety. Katie, you're a mum. Are parents mm. who want to protect their kids doing more harm than good? Oh, I think a lot of parents do a little bit too much helicopter parenting. Um, I, I love racing my kids. I love taking them on in challenges. I like encouraging them, you know, to climb up the playground and go as far as they can. Mm -hmm. I think we've got to actually try and challenge our children a little bit and we can't totally protect them from every situation. And once they get to school, they're going to be exposed to different things that they're going to have to try and deal with. So it's, it's a good idea to try and equip them for that. Yeah, and also, you know, with, it's also good to teach them that you can lose at times, right? I, the, exactly. the parents who always let the kids win, it's like, hang on a minute. <laughs> teach them I'm that it's OK to lose. For that. Yeah, me too. <laughs> Shelley, I mean, we are seeing more kids with anxiety than ever before. Do you think parents need to step back and let their kids be kids? Oh, look, I'm not a parent, so I'm not going to judge anyone's behaviour here. But as an aunt, I've got to say that I love that my nephews take risks and they yeah. are, yep. you know, surfing big waves and they're doing things that I am a little bit terrified of myself. Um, yeah. But I have that thing as an aunt where I'm I'm probably a bit too helicopter because I'm like, don't let them get hurt on my watch. Not on my like, watch. Not yeah. on my watch. Yeah. It terrifies But that's exactly me. what we want the auntie to be. You know, yeah. that's what yeah. you need. Yeah, but for the parents, maybe just let the rain go a little bit and and you know if they take those risks then they won't fear as much in the future right true yeah. okay on to the last topic and rather than eat dodgy hospital food patients are opting to order in delivery services like uber eats and deliveroo are cashing in with patients even instructing drivers which hospital ward to bring their food to shelly would you do the same genius idea <laughs> i love this because the worst thing about hospital is the food so yeah. I actually thought of the perfect solution because one of my girlfriends just had a baby and the thing she's been craving her whole pregnancy is sushi, which, you, you know, you're not allowed to have the raw fish. She as soon as the baby was sushi out, delivered. perfect. Katie, what about you? We're all just so spoiled for choice now, aren't we? Well, we don't get Uber Eats in Darwin. Oh, I wish oh. we did. But when I was in hospital and I had my children, my mother-in-law, who's a beautiful Italian woman, bought me pasta, lasagna, so you good. name it, it came to the hospital. Well, we need one of her down here as well. Yeah, we'll try and get Uber Eats to you up in Darwin, see how it goes. Yeah. Okay, ladies, always fun. Thanks so much for today. We'll Thank see you. you next time. Thank you. And thanks to you for joining us. Coming up next is the afternoon news.